And you just turn to the person next to you and just ask them, are you, are you ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Right, you need to answer that. You need to answer that. Right, so tonight we're going to be speaking about spirit dynamics for breakthrough lifestyle. Do you agree with me that all of us need breakthrough? All of us have emotions. All of us have mindsets that have to be changed. You agree with me? All right. And to break through these things, we need a spirit of breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Right. Say that to yourself. I need a spirit of breakthrough. breakthrough. And praise the Lord that we have that in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. Are you excited tonight? I'm going to be just touching on what Pastor Cornelius spoke about last week, last Sunday night. He spoke, he he touched on something that Dr. Jonathan was um, speaking about. Now, I'm going to take it from an other angle that Dr. Jonathan David, the founder of our network, the founder of the Isaac Network, um, I'm going to take it from a different angle that he also speaks about. All right, so you ready for this? Pastor Cornelius said last weekend that you must come with an expectation. So do you have an expectation? Right. If you don't have an expectation, then I need you to get one right now. Sort yourself out. Get it. All right. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we pray that you help us to have an expectation for what God wants to do. Through what God wants to deposit in our spirits tonight, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right. Have you got that expectation yet? And the rest of you that didn't say anything? That pew over there is full of young people, but you guys are the quietest over there. Are you expectant for what God wants to do tonight? Yes. All right. Stasha, can you worry? Yes. All right. So I'm just going to lay a brief foundation. Now, my definition of brief is not so brief. Um, so you have to bear with my brief, my briefness. All right. So the first point that I just want to briefly discuss with you about taking this breakthrough is we need to operate with the living word. I mean, Pastor Cornelius was talking about that last weekend, about the living word. Jesus Christ is the anointed one. Amen. Amen. So who is the anointing? The Holy Spirit. Spirit. All right. So the first step is I must become acquainted. I must know Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. If you do not have that living relationship with him, you are not going to have a breakthrough lifestyle. A breakthrough lifestyle is something that is constant, is something that is on the go, is something that keeps on pushing you for higher heights, for newer news. Right? Breaking news. Have you ever heard that? All right? That's a breakthrough lifestyle. Pushing for something new, pushing for something higher. I'm not talking about perfectionism. Talking about excellence, the excellence of spirit. Amen. Amen. Just say this with me. I want want an excellent spirit. spirit. I have have an excellent spirit. spirit. Amen. Do you believe that tonight? Right? It is within you. All you need to start doing is accessing it. Can you just turn to the person next to you and just say, you need to start accessing that excellent spirit that is within you. All right, so we need to operate from the living word, right? We need to come to know him as our Lord and our Savior. We need to live, move, have our being within him. Amen? Right, Acts 17 verse 28 says that so nicely. In him we live and move and have our... All right, say it with me, please. In him we live and move and have our being. All right, let's say it again. I want us to say it and say it until we believe it. Right, sometimes you need to... You need to push your mind. You need to, I don't know how to say this. You need to repeat it. You need to stand on it. You need to proclaim it. I remember there was, there was once where I really had a bad attitude problem and I was at home and I just told my wife, just give me half an hour. And you know what I did? I went outside and I started nailing my flesh. And I started standing on the word and I started speaking the truth. I said, I will not embrace this rubbish attitude that I have right now. I spoke to my soul, just like David spoke to his soul in Psalm 42 verse 11. He says, why are you downcast my soul? Put your hope in God. All right, I did not have such quaint words to speak to my soul. I did not ask my soul, why are you downcast? I didn't even give him a chance to reply. I spoke and you said, you shut up now. 
Right? Excuse the words, but that, that is how I spoke to my soul. I used it, you shut up now, you take the word of God, you take the truth of God, you apply it now, you choose it, you embrace it. And I went on like that for half an hour until I experienced poof, that attitude's gone. If you do not persist, if you, not, if you don't have passion to break through, you will never break through. Passion without action is useless. Unfortunately, a lot of us sit in the church with passion with no action. We're so excited, get so excited about the Word of God, get so excited about what people are saying here on stage. But do you do anything about it? Look at your lives through the week. How do you go and apply the Word of God? How are you busy applying that? In Him, say this with me, in Him we live. In Him we move. In Him we have our being. Amen. amen. Can I get a stronger amen? Because that, amen. that, all right, I'm going to, before, before the amen. <laughs> that we need to desire with our whole heart. That in Him we will live, in Him we will move, in Him we will have our own, uh, have our whole being. When we say amen, you need to be convinced of what you'll be saying. Right? Faith comes by Hearing. So what do I need to do to convince myself? I need to speak loud enough to hear. Yes. You with me? Yes. I need to convince my mind. If I just stand and sit or sit down and oh, move and have my being. Oh, amen, 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 amen. But if that's just happening in your mind, maybe you talk so much in your mind that you really can convince yourself. But um, for, for the majority of us, we need to hear something. You need to hear it loud. You need to hear it clear. You need to be convinced of what you're busy saying. Right? So can we say that together and that we proclaim afterwards, Amen? Yes. Is that okay? Yes. The group up top there? Yes. Amen. Amen. Right, excellent. Let's say this together. In Him we live. In Him we move. In Him we have our being. Amen. Come on, church. We need to get excited about the Word of God. Yes. Right? You're with me. Yes. Right? So point two, we need to operate in and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. All right? So when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we receive the Trinity. We have the fullness of God in Jesus Christ, the deity. That is what the Scripture says. So we have the Holy Spirit within us, but that does not mean that you are living under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. If you read through the book of Acts, um, Paul meets up with some of Apollos' disciples and they know nothing about the Holy Spirit. They're busy functioning under the baptism of Jesus Christ. They're busy functioning with that and doing the things, spreading the gospel. But when he comes and explains to them the baptism of the Holy Spirit, man, they're spirit connects, their spirit gets ignited, their spirit links onto this truth, and they start operating in a new dimension, right? They start operating in a higher level. Do you want to operate in a higher level, or are you just satisfied with your lifestyle as is today? All of us want something better. All of us want better pay. All of us want to have the full package of DSTV. Okay, maybe just some of us. All of us want a nicer house. All of us want this kind of thing. Some of you don't want to be able to live off of bread every single day. Right? We all desire this. Right? We're desiring a higher lifestyle. Now, firstly, access that higher dimension in the spirit, and then the rest will come. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Amen. So we see with Jesus' life, if we look in Luke 3, I'm just going to briefly discuss. Right? I said my brief introduction was going to be brief, in my definition of brief. So I'm still keeping to that. Um, we see Jesus' life up to Luke 3, not operating under the Holy Spirit just yet. For 30 years of his life, he was known as the perfect man. Jesus. Jesus, the man from Nazareth. He's a Nazarene. All right. Then in Luke 3, John the Baptist baptizes him and the Holy Spirit comes upon him. 
Who is the Holy Spirit? We said it earlier. Who is the Holy Spirit? The anointing. The anointing comes upon Jesus Christ and what happens to Him. From here onwards, we start hearing them speak of Jesus Christ. What is Christ? The anointed one. Right? For 30 years operating as Jesus, the perfect man. Now he comes, gets baptized, the Holy Spirit descends upon him like a dove. And from here onwards, we see him as the Christ. All right? You with me? We also see in Luke 3 that the Holy Spirit leads him into the desert. So who's the one that's leading him now? The Holy Spirit is leading him. Who's the one that is leading you today? Your emotions? Your work? Your tiredness, your DSTV, that KFC that you ate at lunch is speaking to you louder than what my voice is speaking, and I'm quite, I'm blaring here tonight. Who is leading you? Who is your shepherd? Right, you've heard that saying on TV, who's your daddy? I turn to the person next to you and ask them, who's your shepherd? Who's your shepherd? Right. What we see here, the next point the operation under the flesh stops as I yield to the living Word and the Spirit of God. Now we see Jesus operating under the Holy Spirit's guidance. And what happens? The Holy Spirit leads him into the desert. Leads him to a place where he's going to be tempted. Alright? Most of us would say, get behind me, Satan. How could you lead me into this place? How could you lead me into a place where I have nothing? Your Word says that there'll be blessing, there'll be all of this. But the Holy Spirit leads him to a place where there's nothing. And here Jesus gets a revelation, or I can't say gets the revelation, he's always had the revelation, but he shares a revelation. He speaks forth a revelation that man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Right, say that with me. Man will not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, just to cut it short, we've already in the church spoken a lot about this, but the bread that they're referring to over there is not just physical bread, all right? It's referring to the Word, the Logos Word, the letter of the Word. Logos. Say that with me, Logos. Logos. That is what it's referring to, right? Man will not live by Logos alone, but by every proceeding word, every rhema word. What is the rhema word that is proceeding from Father God's mouth? It is the living word, Jesus Christ, the manifest word within your life, right? The law that was given to, to the people in, in Egypt, in the desert, sorry, out of Egypt, in the desert, in the wilderness, that, that could not bring perfection to the people's lives. It could not stop them from sinning. That is what Romans 8 says. The law could not stop the people from sinning, but it is the spirit of life. It is the living word, Jesus Christ, that perfects that word within you that can cause you to stop sinning. Your breakthrough does not just lie in, in reading this day in and day out. Your breakthrough lies in receiving rhema word, revelation word, spirit-filled word, spirit-life word within your spirit. Amen? Amen? So what are you receiving? Are you just doing your daily logos? Or are you eating that rhema word on a daily basis? That spirit full, that spirit revealed, living word, Jesus Christ, who brings that, about that perfection within you. Do you know that it is possible to live a life without sin? We're all growing into it. But you need the living word, Jesus Christ, within you. We see that the Holy Spirit leads him into the desert, right? And here, this desert kind of symbolizes the nature of the flesh. Because Jesus is, is faced with temptation. He's faced with temptation. Where are we tempted? In your spirit? No. You, you are tempted in your fleshly nature. Right? In the flesh. Right? What does Jesus do? In the power of the Holy Spirit, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, He has the ability to overcome all manly temptation. 
That living word that overcome, overcame every form of manly temptation is living in you and me tonight. That is something to get excited about, people. Can we get excited about that? That is something to become passionate about. The living word is within you. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says the word is living and active. Say that with me. Living and active. Do you believe that tonight? Yes. That living and active word can set you free. That living and active word can change your mindsets. That living and active word can change your perspective of your circumstances. Amen? Amen. Right, so I was still stuck on the Holy Spirit leading Jesus into the desert. What we see here at the end of Luke 4, not well, towards the middle of Luke 4, is Jesus comes out from the desert. But the writers here say, that he came out full of the power of the Holy Spirit. And what does he start doing? The heading of the passage says, Jesus' ministry starts. Jesus' ministry starts. Where? In his own power or under the guidance, under the power of the Holy Spirit? Full of the Holy Spirit, he comes out and he starts speaking. He says, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me. Pastor Cornelius um, referred to the scripture in Isaiah 61, right? The Spirit of the so Sovereign Lord is upon me. Here it says it in, in Luke 4, page with me there, Luke 4, from verse 18 through to 19. It says exactly the same, just a shorter version. Right, I'm going to read it quickly for us. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, the recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ is the living word. The living word under the operation of the Spirit. Acts 1 verse 8 says the following, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses to the end of the earth. Right? You will receive power. The Holy Spirit was upon Jesus Christ. He came out of the desert and it says, He came out full of the power of the Holy Spirit. And with that power, He started His ministry. Some of us can't wait. We just take a half a word. We take a half of this, half of that, and then we go on mission trips. For 30 years, Jesus had to wait. And then He still had to go through temptation. Overcoming the flesh. You know the process of overcoming the flesh symbolizes a lot of discipleship, a lot of discipline. Getting that fleshly nature, getting that attitude out of you. So that you can be an accurate representation of the King of Kings. Amen? Are you with me? If you look at the Old Testament, who died in the desert? Those that could not deal with their attitudes. Those that could not deal with their flesh. Those that could not deal with their judgments, their arrogance against leadership. Even when leadership was wrong, even when leadership misrepresented Christ. Right, you all know that thing where Father God says to Moses, strike the rock the first time. Right, the second time he says, speak to the rock. Who does that rock symbolize? Jesus Christ. The first time Jesus Christ, the rock was struck. Jesus Christ will only be struck once. Because he's the perfect sacrifice. There is no need for him to be struck again. Because his sacrifice, everything that he laid down for, for, for you and I was perfect. The second time we call upon his name. Amen? Is everyone with me? So even when leadership misrepresents Christ, what do you do? Do you honor or do you sit and die in the desert? Right? So operation under the flesh stops as I yield to the living word and the spirit of God. And then point four, we now operate in the power of the Holy Spirit and the living word. We operate from the holy place, right? We operate in the power of the Holy Spirit and the living word. That's where we said Jesus returned in power of the Holy Spirit. And then he spoke that the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. And now my operation starts. 